Okay, thanks all for coming to our talk about Eclipse Platform. You will now see the past, the present, and the future of the Eclipse Platform. It has been an awesome time in, uh, in, in, in the recent uh, months, what happens in the platform. We will show you uh, what we are all working on. So first, uh, let us introduce shortly ourselves. Lars? Yeah, my name is Lars, I'm an Eclipse developer. Um, and on the only commercial side, our company offers Eclipse support and trainings. Yeah, and I'm Carsten from ETMS, uh, mostly known for um, e uh, Eclipse X-Text, uh, but on X-Text we are also depending on things that are provided by the platform, and when we improve the platform, it helps also X-Text and our users. Okay, um, it's about uh, the Eclipse Java IDE, and uh, we want to sh uh, show you what all the cool features came in in the past. So, um, of course, you know, um, the new cadence of Java, uh, of Java itself, six months releases, uh, is keeping the JDT project really busy. Um, but, uh, and, and most, many features in uh, the IDE are actually J uh, Java related. But uh, there's still plenty to talk about the other things, so we just drop all the JDT stuff. Um, other um, uh, IDEs like VS Code also say, okay, yeah, here, here's Java 11, and we are ready for that. But if you look under the hood, it's actually also based on JDT. So also well, VS Code is heavily depending on uh, that the Eclipse project uh, is staying alive. So if you're programming Java with VS Code, that's absolutely okay, you're still using Eclipse. Of course, JUnit 5, who's using JUnit 5 already? Not so much, yeah, okay. But um, of course, there's, uh, this is a new huge release of, of the famous uh, testing framework, and uh, we also adopted this in, into the Eclipse platform, of course. And also, we have um, heavy amounts of tests that we want to refactor also. There are plenty of uh, JUnit free tests uh, still in, in the code base, and we can uh, heavily um, yeah, uh, yeah, gain something from uh, writing this into JUnit 5. Uh, there's parallelizing of tests, um, there's stream using, and so there's plenty of good things coming up. You can tag um, tests, so you can say, here yeah, I have slow tests, they are fast tests, I want only to execute the fast tests, or I only want to execute plug-in tests, and you just say, okay, I'm starting um, tests with that tag. There's really cool features in JUnit 5, but also here we cannot go into deep. Uh, who of you is um, developing Eclipse plugins? So you are already... Um, Just for uh, everyone, approximately 80% of the room, I think. Yeah, okay. Just um, so you all know the pain with defining uh, target platforms with the target definition editor. And the typical thing that I did in the past is um, I opened the target definition, definition, definition file just with the text editor. But now we added um, a new folder here, a source folder. And actually, um, that's pretty um, smart because it, this uh, behind the scenes, that's the generic editor of Eclipse uh, that is uh, keeping improved. And the generic editor uh, can uh, provide all the smartness features that you know, like code completion. And it's uh, quite cool that you can uh, now select the versions from the repositories here. Uh, and have code completion on the units uh, that are installed in the repositories, and this uh, yeah, helps better to, to define good target um, files. You have code completion for environments and uh, all, all the things there. One of the important things with this is that code completion in the generic editor is always non-blocking. So this is something we would also like to see in all other areas of Eclipse, because blocking content assist is is blocking, so it's bad. Um, and that's a general theme, I think. We come ba ba uh, back later to it also a bit, um, which we just would like to see everywhere where it's possible. Um, you may uh, also have to deal with Eclipse launch configuration. You start a runtime Eclipse, and the typical thing that you normally do is just start a uh, launch configuration with all the target platform uh, plugins installed thousands of plugins that start up, and of course, it's slow. But if you, f for example, just want to start a, uh, a, pl a test bundle with all the required plugins, then it becomes uh, very um, complicated. There's an option, you may know that, uh, that there's a, a requ add required plugins uh, button, but this uh, has, has been broken because um, it could not detect all the required plugins. 
Um, and the reason was that um, there's a new feature in OSGI. Um, who knows about, about OSGI generic capabilities? Few of them. Um, and um, the PDE tooling was just not prepared for that. Um, so this is a, a more loose coupling between plugins. It's not that you say, okay, this plugin requires that plugin. It says this uh, plugin provides some, f some service and another um, provide, uh, consumes that service. And this uh, was just not con um, considered in the launch configuration um, uh, dialog. And this has been fixed, so now you can create very smart and uh, um, your minimal um, setups. Um, we also placed some focus in the last releases on user interface experience. Um, <laughs> like, like this clicker is good. Um, for example, and that's a pet, uh, a pet thing of mine, is that we try to give more reasonable labels to, to the buttons. If you remember, the, you close an editor, it was dirty. You got this dialogue, yes, no, cancel. It gets now more reasonable labels which help you easier to decide and faster to decide what to do. And while it's a sm small change, actually several of, several of our customers actually explicitly noticed that and said, oh, it's a cool change. Um, we also um, use a different font on Mac, and I think the important bit is that the bold font is now here supported, so it looks better on Mac, small thing, but of course all Mac users cheer for that. Um, we also use modern widgets in SWT, for example. We use now the native widget uh, dialog of a new directory picker uh, chooser. Um, for Windows user, hopefully a good achievement. We are also constantly trying to improve quick access. Um, unfortunately, we notice that our user base from Eclipse is not really aware of what quick access is. Who, is who knows quick access? Oh, very good. Very, very, very skilled good. audience which joins the platform talk. Um, you can now, for example, also go to um, the preferences. You can actually query the Eclipse help system via this. Um, hopefully, this will make it even more usable because we think it's one of the killer features um, in, in Eclipse. Um, we're also improving our, uh, our dialogues. Um, if you remember, open resource dialogue um, used to not show the path, and it was not using a styled label provider. So you could just type something and, and you weren't sure from which path it is. We have changed that. Um, we also changed that in the open type dialog so that you always see the package name. No? It used to be that it was only showing the package name if there were conflicting packages. And at least for me, this was sometimes not optimal because I was looking actually for the package name of something. Um, and now it's consistent usage. Oh, in both dialogues. Um, as we had started off with a Star uh, Wars, is it Star Wars? Star Wars, yeah. uh, Star Wars theme, of course, um, we have to talk about the dark side of things. And um, I like to say that all the cool kids use dark themes. Um, I'm one of them, no? one of the cool kids. And, uh, but if you used the dark theme in an earlier release, you were cool, but you had a very ugly user experience, in Eclipse at least. Um, so we're constantly improving that. There are a lot of people working on this area, and it depends a little bit on the platform. But if you look at the recent release and the dark theme, um, it has improved quite a bit. This is kind of a user experience on Linux, which is, in my opinion, the best experience for the dark theme. Um, but also Windows and Mac has been improved by several people and um, you can now use it if, if you like dark themes. Oh. And if not, you're still cool, huh? so don't, don't worry. Um, code minings is also something um, relatively recently added to the platform and I think it will be the biggest feature in the next releases as we start now using it in our code base. Um, if you have not heard what code mining it is, basically the ability to asynchronously add additional information to your text editor. Um, you may know it from Visual Code, that it, they add, for example, the references to the code. So you have a method, 
um, or function, and then you see it's referenced five times in your source code. Yeah, if uh, think about you call a Java method uh, which has five Boolean parameters, and you call it with true, true, false, 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 and uh, you don't know what what you actually want to do there. And if you just place the name of the parameters that you um, uh, that you're calling there, then it be becomes far more readable. Yeah. And so we can, for example, show the type of um, a, um, a parameter or the name. You can also add some arbitrary information, like who modified the uh, method as l at last, so you can go to your colleague and ask him. Um, but also, you can add some emojis or other graphics to it. Um, and that's a nice feature. Um, there is also a plugin out there, which we hope to see in the platform soon, is where you see the debug information of a variable directly inlined in the um, text editor, a feature which is available, for example, in IntelliJ, and once you get used to it, you unwilling to miss it again. So at the moment, it's available for Eclipse, you have to install it, but we hope to migrate it to platforms soon, or to JDT debug, and make it available for the larger audience um, without hassle of installation. One of my favorite uh, features is Minimap. Um, that is a Minimap here. It's basically a small representation of your code. Um, it's used in Visual Cool Code or any other cool editor feature thing like Sublime. And it's also now available in Eclipse. We decided to put it as a view here so that you can choose to enable it or not. Um, I use it all the time instead of out outline uh, view. So hopefully you also enjoy that. But user interface experience is not only like things in the user interface, in my opinion. There's another thing which is important for a good user experience, and that is speed. <laughs> I, I don't like to wait. I want to be productive. And um, so it's very important that um, the uh, re uh, responsiveness of the IDE gets improved. And we did many, many things on um, there. Um, we proved event dispatching in SWT, we um, looked at blocking uh, things um, and uh, tried to resolve them, and also the first experience that a user gets is very important, for example, that if you download um, Eclipse, uh, let's see, uh, that's on Linux, the pack we downloaded the package, and we want to start Eclipse. So that's the first time we started. Um, of course, now that select, uh, workspace uh, is selected, then we have to wait a bit. Oh, no, we don't have to wait, it's already there. Um, so that's the uh, startup speed of uh, the Eclipse Java IDE in f uh, on the first uh, impression. And wi when you start it next time, it's even faster. So um, I think we wanted to um, uh, benchmark this now with, um, uh, with IntelliJ. I think well, uh, we are far better there. I think, I think Mikael from Red Hat um, said yesterday that he once started Gmail in his browser and Eclipse at the same time, and Eclipse was ready before the web page. So. That was nice. We should actually put this in an animated GIF and show that. I today saw an IntelliJ user starting IntelliJ, and I was surprised how much other things you can do while your IDE is starting. Uh, so um, I think it's actually it's important for the user experience to start fast. Let's le have a look at other things. Um, now we do some comparison between oxygen and um, and Photon, uh, and this is here. Um, we have a search dialog with um, plenty of uh, matches, 5,000 matches. Um, let's expand them on oxygen. We see all oh, blinking cursor, ugly cursor, and it takes a while, and uh, uh, it's not a good experience. So um, with Photon, um, we have proved that. And if you see that, OK, we have now a better cursor, uh, a system cursor, and it's far um, faster. Reason is here um, that we identified uh, that for each um, single uh, sub node, um, the, uh, yeah, there's a synchronous refresh on the tree, and uh, we just disabled um, the refreshing while the tree is exp uh, computing and expanding, and this um, improves the speed here. Another place where you will recognize. Just sorry, to, to, sorry? to add this, um, and that is a photon performance. The December release will be even faster because there are several more patches in the tree thing, which makes it even faster. So let's see another um, uh, thing where, where we can identify um, a visible, uh, visible improvement. We import projects from the Git repository. Um, so we select um, import projects. And you see the, uh, below the links, and every, every file is uh, presented. Actually, um, each file is there. Uh, presented synchronously. Um, and in the Photon release, uh, we introduced something which is called um, the, uh, uh, the throttler. 
um, which allows us to um, yeah, only show uh, information to the UI at um, a specific rate. And I think 100 milliseconds per update is uh, fa fair enough for the human eye. Um, so it uh, g goes down to, on down to almost nothing there. Speaking of performance, it's not only speaking about um, um, uh, speed, it's, all, uh, it's also about um, memory footprint. And if you take um, a bare Java IDE, um, okay, it's uh, freshly started, fresh workspace, um, not a real use case, but if you uh, look, in the minimum it takes 40 megabytes heap. It's almost nothing, yeah. huh? It's, it's almost like nothing. Um, yeah, now just imagine how many memory your Slack client needs. Okay, <laughs> um, that's on a real use case. Um, my real use case, my, my smoke t uh, test, is always my platform workspace. And there I have um, a workspace with 40 uh, Git projects and all projects from, uh, from these Git, pro uh, Git repositories. There are 1,600 projects in there. 60,000 uh, Java classes, and the full build is uh, totally running fine at 1.2 gigabyte heap. That's awesome. And that used to be different, huh, to give you this addition. Uh, so it used to be much more before there was a lot of optimization in, in this area. Um, I think mainly in JDT. Yeah. 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 And if you'd like to know more about these uh, improvements that we actually did, um, tomorrow here um, in the morning, I will give, uh, give you an insight uh, on what we actually did in the platform um, to speed up um, the platform and uh, the memory footprint reducing. So this is done already. We, we talked a little bit about the future. There's also some work behind the scenes which, which happens. Um, one of the things um, I think the team is particularly proud of is that we managed to increase the uh, community participation quite a bit. So if you look at this, this is a top-level Eclipse project, including JDT, um, PDE, Platform, and E4. So you see that there's a lot of companies working like Red Hat, uh, Microsoft actually working on the language server implementation. It's our company, but also IBM, of course, uh, very strong here. Um, but the thing I like about this graph is the unaffiliated committer and the contributor thing, which is 80%, and I don't know which this is, but it has a nice color and it's still big. So um, I think together we're almost the largest block of that. And you see also here on this individual chart that we have lots of small patches from individual people, individual companies, and so on. And that, I think, is a good sign for an open source project health. It's not only five people developing the framework and everything else is ignored or nobody contributes to it because it's too difficult. There was a lot of work doing making it easier to contribute. Um, a lot of people trying to react timely on patches, and that has shown that it actually grows the community. Um, we also do a lot of cleanup in the code, uh, so people which want to contribute find a better place to put their code in. So I think um, it's a really good sign, and you have a list of the companies here, um, also um, a lot of important companies working on this. Um, as a direct reaction of a Java, new Java release cycle of six months, the general release train of Eclipse decided to go to three months release cycle. Um, I love it. Um, of course, it creates issues for um, certain workloads and also so for certain projects, but it really gives us an opportunity as a platform um, to deliver our value to, our, to you as a customer or contributor faster. And I have several customers in the RCP area, area which I'm really happy about this because they don't have to wait for their fixes for maybe nine months, 12 months, but at a maximum of three months if there's a fix. And some told me that it's really motivating for them actually to fix them themselves because they can actually use it. Wait, um, on the downside, um, this also has uh, challenges to other projects that uh, want to participate in the new um, release cadence. Uh, speaking of Xtext, it, it is horrible for us uh, to uh, step on this new uh, um, three-month release train, and we have to do this because we have to use the latest uh, uh, Eclipse Tyco, latest Java release, and some and tests to be compatible with that. Um, but we managed to do this also now. 
And we may even change this. Um, I'm not sure, Mokito, you probably know, it's a mocking framework, very popular. And they actually have this continuous release thing. So every commit in Mokito is a release. So we basically automated the whole process. I don't think we will ever be there. Um, but it would be, it's nice, I think. It's, it's, of course, it creates a lot of work also on our team. Huh? It's, not, it's not all sunshine and glory and singing in the garden. Um, but um, for the users, it's really nice. We also do some cleanup. Um, there are things that nobody uses anymore. Who is using Windows Vista? I still use it in my fridge. No, no? <laughs> okay, so uh, we decided to, uh, we can drop this now from SWT. And also, GTK2 was a major uh, cause of pain on the Linux side. It has so many errors and uh, so many bugs um, just related to that release. And so we said, okay, drop that. We fo totally focus on, uh, on GTK3 now. Eric Williams uh, uh, from, from Red Hat is doing a great job here, is, uh, reducing all the um, uh, bugs um, in, in the Linux uh, integration. And uh, yeah, of course, you can only focus on one implementation. And Eric, feel free to skip in, but I think this removal of GTK3 killed 20,000 lines of code. All right, 20, 30,000 lines less code, which the system potentially has to run through. Uh, there was some uh, two actually two contributors which also did the same for SWT um, port on Windows. And if I remember correctly, we removed 15,000 lines of code where it was an if check, if Windows uh, 95 and so on. And all this has been removed. It's also removing from the runtime, so it should have be faster and easier to maintain. Oh, so. Um, really happy about this. Cleanup patches are my favorite patches. I always smile if I see deletion of code. And we are heavily working on okay. the bugs that are report, uh, reported to Eclipse. Um, some of you may have been yesterday in my talk about the uh, automatic error reporting system. This is um, a view from, from the committer side here. And the, a good thing here is uh, we can focus on those things that are reported by many people and or pick all the low-hanging fruits. Uh, do you think, do you know what, what is the main cause of errors in Eclipse? Users. Yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> uh, layer 8 uh, problems, yeah, no. Um, null pointers, of course, and SWT exceptions because you did not check for a disposed widget. And you can pick all of them. This is a, that's, um, that are no-brainers. And, um, and by constantly working on that, uh, the overall experience uh, with Eclipse gets better and better and better. And um, yeah, that's also um, uh, one thing contributors could um, work easily on. It's a good starting point. What I, uh, what's not related to code, but I would like to emphasize is um, uh, the social activity has, has a new uh, initiative. Um, do you know the Eclipse Java IDE Twitter account? You should follow that. Um, and uh, this is gaining 500 uh, followers per month. That's uh, an uh, awesome activity. So people are getting aware that there's something happening. Um, and also there are cool videos by Holger Forman um, showing always uh, the new releases in a in very professional way um, on YouTube. So we have community-based marketing, which is really cool. Um, we're also developing new things. Um, Usability is a big thing. We, we would like to improve usability, and as soon as we notice certain things, we try to improve it. And for example, the editor drop-down um, or the show path um, shortcut listed the files, but I at least have always a lot of files uh, named similar if I do um, yeah. documentation. <laughs> and so now you see the path, and you actually can decide uh, to use this. But that's just a small example of, of a lot of things. You want to take this? No. Um, the code mining things can also be used to a very useful thing. Carsten um, and a contributor worked on this um, on Monday on the hackathon, where they actually used code minings to show the error message and the error sign inlined in the text, except this little thing bubble, which is really hard to reach in the code, and you don't see this information. And Honestly, now that I've seen this, I also Love cannot that. imagine a life without it uh, in Eclipse. So I'm really looking forward to this getting integrated or provided by an external plugin. Now it's, it's, how many lines of code was it? Uh, I wasn't working on that, but um, I, I, sorry, I, no, I know code mining, so yeah. it will be around 40. 40 lines of code. 
Um, another big thing, and there was a talk in the past about it, it was yesterday. Yesterday. Yesterday, um, parallel compilation of Java projects. Um, so if you have independent projects, they will not lock. Hopefully, if once this is finalized and finished, it's, it's yet in the development phase because of the future. Um, so you basically then will be able to save a file um, in another Java project while the other compilation is running. It will parallelize, um, if possible, the project parallelization, uh, the compilation, and um, giving enough power on your machine, this can significantly speed up the process of compilation. The other topic, um, which I also like and love, and also Mikkel um, is, from, uh, is working on, is non-blocking code completion or content assist, and also um, auto-activation, so that basically you don't have to type um, a dot or press control space to see con code completion. Once it's not in blocking anymore, we could actually think about it, enabling it always, because it doesn't harm if, if it's non-blocking. Um, so this should be also very nice. I do have a customer which has a lot of dependencies, jars, and code completion for him usually takes six seconds. So if he presses control space, six seconds later, the IDE reacts again, and he's really careful on using code completion, no? only in special situations. Um, another example, um, Fabian, which sits also there, um, works on is the workspace selection dialog. And while it's only one thing, I think actually it's important, um, we have this workspace selection dialog, which is the very first dialog we present to our user, and you can actually select the workspace directory, and it doesn't support code completion. No? Um, I think it's really a bad um, experience which you give our users here. You have to press a button and use the directory selection. So hopefully this is finished soon and we can all enjoy code completion to select directories. Once we have this, we will plan to build it everywhere into the IDE where a directory is selected. Um, we also um, plan to embrace more of a, uh, Java language support. There were several talks about it, but basically the language server support um, provides you a, a way of um, using, of supporting a new language in a text editor with maybe a few hours of development. Mm -hmm. We cannot deny that uh, Java and, uh, is not the only language that uh, people are working on uh, the, nowadays. Uh, JavaScript and TypeScript um, is important, and the best engine of supporting JavaScript and TypeScript is Visual Studio Code. Um, and um, yeah, there has been plugins uh, for JavaScript development in in, uh, um, in Eclipse first class support. They are not that good. Um, they are not updated uh, so frequently. But with the language server support, you can just take the engine from um, VS Code and integrate this into Eclipse. And that's work in progress. Red Hat works on that, as far as I know. So soon you will have the best JavaScript, TypeScript, CSS, HTML support in Eclipse. Rust, because, yeah. because it's the same as in Visual Studio Code. Mm -hmm. And that's the best at the moment. Well. So you see, many things are happening. Uh, it's, uh, we are not the dinosaur anymore. And if you don't notice, this is the reference to the upcoming X-Men movie, <laughs> uh, Dark Phoenix. Or or is it called that? Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so um, the Eclipse project is still alive. The desktop is not that. We, we, we have customers that, that won't change from uh, desktop to cloud-based IDEs for the next 15 years, I bet so. Um, of course, there, there are um, use cases for that, and um, many of them are really interesting, also for us as um, working on several projects. Um, I don't want to set up all the workspaces for, for all the projects that I work on. So um, there are use cases where uh, cloud-based IDs are really good, but the desktop for uh, great co uh, big companies is not that. And um, uh, any change, any improvement that we do to the platform comes uh, to value it for millions of users. So it's very important to work on the platform um, of more. And uh, I'd li like to invite you to, uh, to help us. If you uh, think, yeah, I want to help, come to us. We help you setting up the workspace, uh, guide you through the process. And um, yeah, in, we had, uh, on Monday we had a hack hackathon and there was a few guys from company uh, from Bremen and they said, okay, we, we are using, uh, building RCP applications um, uh, for, for years, and we, now we want to give something back. Okay, so here, 
um, come to me. We set up the workspace, and we managed uh, to uh, to bring a patch within the ha hackathon within two hours. For them. Yeah, in general, a setup of a workspace to contribute. We, we do this also hackathons in Hamburg. Also takes usually 10 minutes, 15 minutes, depending on your speed in which you're cloning. So it's really easy. You need a user. You need to clone the repository, and then you just you uh, can actually start up. It's 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 really easy if you want to contribute. So um, if you liked our talk, um, please drop us a note. Uh, talk with us. Uh, yeah, we like this plus one thing. Um, but uh, maybe you uh, can also write uh, specifically what you like, what you did not like, what you uh, want to, uh, to, to hear, or maybe also in the future. Um, yeah. And we do have time for questions.